what is up everybody my name is Corey vincent and i am a representative of the san francisco shock and energy esports and it is my great honor to be joined by uh, a man I, I, I'm getting to know very well tonight because uh, those last matches went on quite a bit longer than we thought. So we were supposed to only like pregame, pre-talk a little bit, but we ended up uh, becoming best friends. So uh, please let me introduce you to my best friend, uh, Moth. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm talking to you. Uh, this has been an experience because uh, you were the big question mark. You've been the uh -huh. most... You're the most requested person to do these interviews, and uh, I'm. I, I, I everyone would ask me, "What's Moth like? What's Moth like?" And I say, "I don't know. I've never talked to him, but now I get to talk to you." So uh, let's start easy. We'll ease right on into this. Uh, talk to me what you're thinking about tonight's match. Uh, it was really close. Uh, a lot closer than we expected. Uh, we won, but I don't think we're totally happy with how we played. Shanghai's improved a lot. Uh, they had a really great performance as well. So, What were some things you were expecting, and then what did you get? Uh, I mean, I didn't expect it to be this close. I expected, uh, I expected us to win a lot of team fights a lot more convincingly, but they, Addo and Dia really popped off. Gigri had some great plays, and... Uh, fights that we should have won we ended up not winning and uh, it ended up going to like one fight one fight to win Anubis I think uh, it was like one fight for us to tie in Bonnie uh, it was really close so from the outsider's perspective it did look like you guys are, are gelling a little bit better tonight than you were a little earlier in the week can you talk about what uh, practice and communication between you and your team has been like uh, since Valiant t leading up to tonight? Um, well, with Architect coming in, a lot of uh, our focus has been on making sure he gels well with the team because he doesn't speak a lot of English, so we're like working on callouts for him, and I've been adjusting my in-game leading to make sure he understands like what our plans are and uh, how we can approach the next fight. Uh, we had Nomi coming back in for this match, so we only had a couple of days to practice with him, but I mean, he he meshed well with us because, of course, we had him playing before, but uh, he wasn't really expecting to play until just a couple of days ago. So, uh, talk about back up to speed. Talk about like Nomi and Super. How do you, as a support, how do you have to change your game and kind of uh, you know as a leader of the team? How how do you have to change what you do uh, when you're adjusting to a new tank? Um. Well, I think uh, I don't. I don't really know. I think I mesh well with both of them, so I don't really have to alter my playstyle too much. I feel like I play with frontline more with Nomi, and I pocket sleepy more with with uh, Super. Uh, but I don't really think my playstyle changes that much. I don't think it's a huge difference. They both mesh well with the team, so. Uh, as individually, how do you rate your performance? What, what do you think were some of your highlights, uh, and what are some things that you uh, you, you wish you would have done differently? Um, I felt like on Anubis, I played pretty well, except I got picked in like the last offense when I shouldn't have. Uh, but like my defense was really good. Um, Elios, I wasn't very happy with how I played on well, but I think I played very well in ruins. Um, on well, I got picked, I think, in the first fight and one or two other fights when I shouldn't have. Uh, but ruins, I think I stayed alive most of the time and was good at healing the team and keeping Architect pocketed and Magic Ball there. Um, Numbani, uh, mechanically, I did okay, uh, but I think my calling could have been better on defense. I felt like I could have... If I had made different calls, we might have had a stronger second point, and maybe we could have prevented them from finishing with so much time. So, uh, talk to us about the state of the team's in-game communication right now, because I hear uh, a lot of things. Um, you know, you, you know, you hear that Super is very outspoken, and then, uh, but I hear that you're the shot caller. But then Sinatra helps keep people calm sometimes, based off of the interview we heard with Architect. So what what is the communication hierarchy or the structure? Who who kind of is responsible for what within the team? Uh, I mean, I do. It's mostly when Super's playing, the comms are mostly me and Super. 
Um, and then when fights break out, you'll hear a lot more of like Dante and Sinatra. Um, but I do like alt tracking, macro calling, like most of the in-game leading. And then Super's kind of taken the position of calling like engages and where he wants to dive, when he wants to dive, that sort of thing. Um, then Sinatra and Dante, you'll hear a lot more when uh, when fights break out, like target calling. Sinatra's a good target caller. Cool. Um, now we covered a lot about the Shanghai. Uh, now we can look ahead a little bit to next week. Uh, next week is a big one with a couple uh, pretty tough teams. We're going to start off the week taking on the Dallas Fuel, and then move later on in the week, you'll be playing the Philadelphia Fusion. What are some things you guys uh, think you're going to have to improve upon the most before we get to those matches? Um, I feel like in general our team synergy has been a little bit lacking recently. So like things like target focus and going in together and staying together in fights uh, we'll need to fix. Um, Dallas has been looking pretty strong recently with OG. OG's brought a lot of leadership to the team and he's uh, kind of given them direction. We've scrimmed them quite a bit recently with their new roster and they've been looking really good, so it'll probably be a pretty close match. All right. Well, this is the part where we're going to open it up to the people a little bit more. So I'm going to keep my eye in the Twitch chat the best I can. But to be truthful, the best way to get your comments read are going to be to hit our community Discord, which is discord.gg slash sfshock. And we have an AMA questions chat. You go in there and put your questions, and I'll be trying to use that because I do not, unfortunately, have my amazing community manager on the line today. Aaron, uh, she's actually getting married this weekend. So uh, if you know our community manager, Aaron, give her some love on social media or on the Discord. A little congratulations popping in there because uh, we're pretty happy for her. So um, besides that, the other thing we got to plug while uh, you guys are getting your questions in is the uh, Shock Squad in the Discord server. So if your name is White, that's all right. You can make it, uh, you can get one of those cool shock badges, get access to behind the scenes photos, early access to videos, the starting lineup, all sorts of cool information gets dropped into that shock squad. Uh, and to do that, there is a link in the announcements tab. I think, uh, let me find the link. I'll, I'll tell you guys spoilers. Let me see. Oh boy. I should have thought about this. I should have prepared it. This is what happens when, uh. Aaron is not on you guys get this madness and they made it like a convenient URL and everything and I just ruined it. I ruined the whole AMA I'm sorry moth <laughs> <laughs> oh there it is uh, SF shock squad.com you can go there it's a quick sign up you get access uh, to special channels in the discord and uh, we're gonna be doing special raffle giveaways of signed stuff from the players, uh, jerseys. I've been trying to get us to raffle off one of those new uh, $300 jackets. Um, so hopefully we'll be doing that. Have, have you? Do you have one of those jackets yet, Moth? Have you seen it yet? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? They, 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 got them, they got them to all the players, but I haven't, Architect and I don't have them yet. Oh, uh, too, too new? Yeah, too new. Uh, well, well, we'll have to take care of that. We'll have to yeah, take they care. have the they have the player numbers on them as well, so I'm sure it's just because we weren't around when they like made them. Have you gotten to like feel one yet, though? Can you can you speak for the quality? I haven't. I I need like I'm asking as a fan because I want. I'm I'm really seriously thinking about spending the money, but I need like an endorsement. Yeah, they they look comfortable. I don't know. <laughs> they look <Being> comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna put you on the sales force anytime soon. <laughs> Um, let me see. I'm going to go to the AMA. I'm like an old man. I'm sorry, guys. AMA questions. All right. But before we get there, we'll jump in there in a minute here. But Moth, uh, tell me about your life, dude. I want to know, where are you from? Uh, well, before coming to Burbank for Overwatch League, I was attending Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> So I was uh, living there for a while. Uh, before that, I was attending high school in Zurich, Switzerland for five years. And then before that, I'm originally from Minnesota. Dude, you're like a world traveling G 200 IQ dude. Is that 
fair to say? How did you get into Switzerland for school? Uh, that was my dad. Uh, my dad's job brought us there. He works insurance, and he like whenever there's an op option to go overseas, he likes to take it. So we we went there. Cool. So bilingual. How many languages do you speak? Uh, no, just English. My German's not very good. Okay. I took German for two years, but it's not great. And then the college, that was a big name for a college. What were you going there for? Uh, computer science. Computer science. Of course, it's always computer science with these pro gamers. What, what, <laughs> yeah. what was the goal? I was doing computer science as well, I think. <laughs> what, what, what was the goal? Or, well, what still is the goal, maybe? Uh, to become a software engineer eventually. Uh, like, I, I really like programming and I know a lot of programming languages. So after Overwatch League, I'll probably go back to doing that. See, I, I've known a lot of programmers, but usually they're into like making like databases for like a tax company or something like that. What What do you want to do? Like in the ideal world, are you making uh, video games, or what do you want? What's... No, I, I I am not a game development guy. I've tried it. I don't. It's not really my thing. I really like uh, low level programming, like C or assembly. Um, I had a cybersecurity internship uh, soft, after sophomore year of college, and I really like doing that. Um, maybe cybersecurity or just like low-level software engineering. How do you think about that stuff? Like, are you fully focused like on Overwatch and, you know, making it forever as a player or, or do you very much realize, do you think this is yeah, just like a, a detour? I, this is, yeah, this is pretty temporary. I think, I mean, most programmers retire like, what, 25, 30, like, so uh, eventually I'll have to do something else. So I'll be doing software engineering or something. Are you uh, continuing your classes just remotely, or, or, or have you taken a break? Um, right now, I'm just taking a couple online classes uh, to finish out this semester, since there's only a couple of weeks left. But next semester, I will maybe take a break, maybe take some classes. I don't really know what I'll be doing yet. Uh, I still don't really know what Overwatch League players are going to be doing in the off season for like next semester in the fall. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, how are you fitting in with the team? Because uh, I've done a lot of these interviews. You seem pretty mellow, well-spoken, you know, methodical with your words. Uh, and uh, no offense to the rest of your team, but they don't seem like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been getting along well. Uh, yeah. Is this different for you, like, being a part of, like, a, a team? Because, like, you got dudes like Baby Bay and Dak, these big jock guys who are, you know, loud. And, you know, you got a big sweetheart like Nomi. And you got... These these ruffian kids, Sinatra and, and Dante, doing their thing, and so. I mean, well, I mean, this isn't my first Overwatch team. I've been playing on teams for like since season two. So I was actually on a team with Nomi a while ago. Like, so it's, I mean, being on a team with a variety of people isn't that diff that new for me. But but this is the first time you had to go live. Like you basically these year. These are your dudes. You see them every day, eight hours yeah. a day, and you have to go back. And you, I'm sure you, you who, what's your living? Are you living with some of them? Who do you room with? I'm uh, living with uh, Harsha and Coach Brad. Oh, so you're in the party house? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, not with any of the players right now. Uh, that's just how it worked out when I arrived. All right, so that's my first question that I'm going to put in the Discord. If you had to choose your roommates, who would you choose? Uh, Sleepy, maybe Nomi or Dante. Good choices. Architect or Junkbuck also. How's, how's things progressing with uh, Architect? Because obviously the, the language barrier, is. are you noticing it improving fairly quickly? Or what do you think? Yeah, uh, he's, he's getting better at English very fast, I think. Um, he's learning new stuff every day. Uh, when he arrived, he didn't speak very well, but now he's taking classes and he's getting better. And that, books teaching him a lot. That's awesome. All right. Um, we'll go through the first question in here. And uh, I, I just like this one. I think it's a cute question. This one comes from Crystal in the Discord. She says, why moth and not butterfly? <laughs> um, moth has been something I've been using for a long time for Counter-Strike. I used it for two years. Uh, I carried it over to Overwatch. Um it was originally uh, a Lord of the Rings reference because Gandalf has like his little moth in the in the movies. So you're a, you're, you're a ringy. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't I haven't watched the movies in a long time, but I used to be a huge fan. 
that's why I used it. And so it's just completely coincidence that you end up playing a character that everyone yep. nicknamed as Moth. Totally, totally a coincidence. Yep. So Moth, I think that my original intention. I, I'm a Lucio main, so. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be playing Mercy in the Overwatch League. Um, Asymmetris, also from the uh, Discord here, and I think she's in chat as well uh, on Twitch, says, Hey Moth, what's your favorite support to play and why? Also, which Overwatch character do you relate to most and why? There's a lot to unpack there. That's a deep question. Let's start with the easy one. Who's your favorite support? Uh, Lucio, definitely, because he's like really versatile. You can, you can, like, Heal, you can play with your tanks, you can heal, you can be a DPS and frag out. Um, there's so much you can do with him. Um, and there's a lot of mind games to playing him. Uh, the other one was, who do I relate to? Yeah, which character do you relate to the most? Uh, probably Sombra, because I really like cybersecurity and programming. Like <laughs> what about that new haircut, though? Uh... <laughs> Well, what do you mean? The like new which character that I look like? Oh, no, the, 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 new, the new outfit. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, it looks good. I think I, uh, I haven't got it yet, but I think I'll buy it before the end of the season if I don't have it in the loot box. I think it's getting some unnecessary hate. It's getting hate? Why? It yeah. looks great. I, I thought so too, but I saw a lot of memes like saying that she looks like a, a mom or something like that. Like <laughs> I just saw a lot of bad stuff. But come on, that the that that Hall, the Halle Berry cut. I mean. Come on. Um, next one. Yeah, I think the skin looks amazing. Um, Hype Man Tyler. Uh, we know this guy. Uh -huh. He said, did it scare you the first time you heard the woo asking for a friend? Uh, no, it uh, it, was ni it was nice to hear because uh, the first I think you were there the first match I played and it was good to know that we had fans cheering for us in the crowd and I could hear that through my noise canceling headset so <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see going from contenders to overwatch league how was the transition that one comes from captain talon 447 um uh, I feel like Mechanically, it hasn't been too much of a difference, but there's a lot of more like strategic things that we go over in Overwatch League that uh, would be the biggest difference, I think, because for contenders, like we didn't scrim as much, we didn't do as much VOD review, so it was a lot of like individual play that would determine matches. But for Overwatch League, there's a lot more like uh, macro play that uh, we have to think about. What was the process like getting pick, getting the call up? We'll call it. Did was it? Did it catch you by surprise? Yeah, uh, totally, how did? Totally by surprise. Uh, Can you take us through? A, yeah, take us through the story yeah. when when you when you first got the call. I was. I mean, I was playing for contenders like two weeks before I my debut in Overwatch League, like scrimming for it, expecting to play in my in the first match against XL two. Um, and then, like, what, two weeks before my first match, I got, like, a message on Discord, and I got into a group chat with uh, some of the NRG guys and uh, Brett, and um, then I had a phone call later that day that they said they wanted to make me an offer and came totally out of the blue, and I accepted, and I was flying out, like, within a week and a half. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. What was the... Uh... <clears throat> what what do you think did it? What like when you look back to your performances and stuff? I mean, obviously you uh, are the reason it happened, but like, what what do you think they saw in you? What did they say on that phone call? What, that why did they think you'd be the the fit for this team? Um, uh, I well, I feel like the the trade window was kind of closing, so they wanted to fill out their twelve man roster, and they had room for like supports. Right now, like with our finalized roster, we only have three, but if most teams are going to have four supports to be able to do like in house scrims with like uh, two supports on each team. So they were looking for, they were on the lookout for another support. Um, then uh, I'd worked with uh, Junkbuck in the past. Uh, he knew like how I matched up against all the other uh, potential supports in the tier two scene and contenders. So I'm sure he had something to do with like convincing. They were probably looking at like a bunch of other contenders supports too. So uh, I don't know. It, I'm not sure how, what their decision making was like. 
So uh, you get this call. What's the first thing you do? Uh, I walked. Uh, I started pacing <laughs> in my apartment. I was very nervous, but excited. <laughs> was there ever a chance you would say no? like when you say you're pacing and excited were you were you thinking like yes or no or was it just like yes 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 uh, yeah i mean it was yes like you can't turn down overwatch league if you're in contenders everyone in contenders is working towards an overwatch league spot D who's the first person you called and what was that uh, conversation that, my, my parents i i remember i got the call at like uh we had scrims 6 to 10 that day, and I got the call at like 5.30, so I texted my parents after the call and said, I need to talk to you later tonight. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I called them, and they were very supportive of me and very happy for me. Did they get it? Did they understand how the scale and the scope of what the Overwatch League is? Uh, I filled them in. <laughs> Not really. They didn't really understand it. Uh, they knew I was... Well, uh, I guess kind of. They had some idea because I told them like I was trying out for Watch League teams back in like August uh, 2017 when that was going on. Um, but mm, it was, I mean, it was must have been shocking for them that I was like finally doing it. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Like, you're really cool to see. Um, do you feel different as like i guess we'll call you the second wave of overwatch players like do you feel like this opportunity is any different to you than it is the other guys um i think it's a little bit different for me in that like it wasn't totally anticipated because uh, i was pretty much just a, a con i was a contenders player like i wasn't uh, super well known and I hadn't like a lot of players were kind of expected to make it into the Overwatch League like uh, who had played in the first contender season like FaZe and FNRG, FE and NVS and all those guys I'm sure expected to get spots and they did um, whereas I had I didn't even play in contenders I was just on a on a roster like waiting to play um, and now that the Overwatch League was already kind of filled in like uh, fewer players get that opportunity now so for me it was uh, more of a surprise I guess how do you feel your uh, overwatch league journey has been so far like do you feel uh, like a success because I, I feel like you're great but I don't feel like you necessarily get the spotlight so how, how do you feel about your your journey so far and the perception of people about you um I feel like I've I feel like I've been doing okay, but not excellent. Uh, I always feel like uh, mechanically I could do a little bit better on stage, uh, and I still have a lot of things I can work on from a shot calling perspective and mechanically on a bunch of heroes. Um, so mm, I've been doing all right. Not the best, but acceptable. <laughs> all right. You're a realist, dude. Like. <laughs> I'm glad you're just right in the middle. There's those people who say, oh, I suck. I'm garbage. I haven't been doing it. Then there's the other people who way over inflate their abilities, but you're just right there completely being truthful. And I, I respect that. Um, a guy root beer and he's got, uh, quite a bit of, uh, likes on this moth. Do you think your experiences at uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute of Technology influenced your Overwatch play? Um, the only connection that I'd make between playing or going to Worcester Polytechnic and my Overwatch play would be, so I played on the that school team, the Worcester Polytechnic's uh, Overwatch League team in the Tespa Collegiate Series in 2016, and... I ended up joining my first like amateur team after that season by getting to know some players on different collegiate teams. Um, so if I hadn't played collegiate Overwatch, I might not have uh, eventually joined uh, an amateur team. It's all connected. It all happens for a reason. <laughs> uh, same person, Root Beer, also asks, Moth, what routine do you use to maintain those luxurious golden locks? Uh, shampoo and that's it. <laughs> no conditioner, <laughs> huh? Not a conditioner guy. Uh, shampoo and like 
like I right I mean I use whatever right now I've used the combined shampoo and conditioner I I get whatever's cheap <laughs> <I'm> really <laughs> <I'm not laughs> dude you're you're my guy you're my kind of guy I look at these Instagram photos of the all the G uh, all, all the Jeezys all the all the Jordans and the Yeezys and I just don't get yeah. it <laughs> what, what kind of shoes you wearing right now I don't even know what the <laughs> brand is. Um, I think we got them at like a thrift store or something. Morel. Look at those. That's that's shoes, people. Those that's are shoes. <laughs> like when you close your eyes and someone says the word shoe, what pops in your head? That what he just held up right there. <laughs> that's a shoe. Good lord. Thank you. <laughs> I love all those sneaker heads out there. They are very cool, but I could never afford them, and that's that's a shoe. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go get those <laughs> those new moth shoes right there. Um, let's get one more out there, and then uh, we'll let you get back home because you definitely uh, deserve an ice cream or however you want to celebrate. <laughs> um, let's see. I want to find a good one. Um, Oh, here's a really good question. Dang, root beer. Uh, root beer, hit me up on the Discord, and I'm going to send you 100 uh, Overwatch League tokens because you have some really good questions. Uh, Moth, who do you think is going to be on Team USA for the World Cup? So just throwing out some names. Who do you think deserves to be there? Um, well, it's going to be a 12-man roster, so I think a bunch of the people make it. It'll be really a competition for those seven spots that travel. Um, I think for tanks, it would probably be Muma and Super for main tank, and Coolmat and Space for off tank, and then for DPS, like Hydration, Silk Thread, Dantes, and Otra will have really good shots at those four spots, and then for supports, it'll be like uh, Rockus and Sleepy for flex support, and then Boink, Adam, or me, or even Elk for main support. I don't really know who will make it. Avast has a really good chance, too. Um, I feel like there's a bunch of good main supports who can make it as well, but a lot of the other slots are determined already. There we go. All right, man. Moth, you got through your first interview with me. I hope I hope it was okay. I hope uh, you definitely uh, are one of my quickest growing favorites. I still haven't bought a, a jersey of a player yet. I have my own. But I want to get one from a player, and I'm trying to decide who's going to be my first. And you uh, you might be the front runner right now. Uh, if you want to follow Moth, you can do so on Twitter. He is at Moth underscore OW. Uh, you do not – do you have a Twitch yet at least so people could start subbing uh, for when you start your streams? Moth underscore OW, but I haven't started streaming yet, and I don't know when I will or how much I will. You heard it right there. Twitch.tv slash moth underscore OW. Go follow him even though he hasn't streamed yet so that when he does stream and he decides to, you'll get the notification and you can watch the man play some Overwatch Live. Or maybe not. What other games would you play? Are you going to play some Sea of Thieves? Nope. I pretty much only play Overwatch. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> yep. All right. I, I used to play other games, but now... You Overwatch said CS, right? You're not yeah, gonna... I used to play CS. I haven't played in years. All right. Well, you get to see the man play some Overwatch. Uh, I would definitely pay top dollar to see that. You can follow me on Twitter as well at What's Up Pizzas. Um, I don't know why you would, but you can, and it's right there on the screen if you want to do that. Also, uh, you could uh, subscribe to the Shock Squad. Like I was telling you, we're going to be doing announcing our first major giveaway. It's a signed collector's memorabilia item from the SF Shock. We're very excited about it, uh, but the only way you can be entered is if you join that Shock Squad group, which uh, I gave you the details to earlier. Uh, follow us on Discord. There's always people in there. Uh, we have some of my favorites, like Cassidy. Uh, you have uh, Asymmetris in there. Shock uh, Hype Man Tyler is in there, too, if you want to actually uh, interact with our, our little local celebrity. He's always in there. That's a fun time. Uh, on Twitter, at SFShock. We have content daily, youtube.com slash SFShock. There's content weekly. Uh, but that's it. That's enough plugs. Are you guys still here? You want, I can keep plugging. I'll plug all day. No? All right. We're going to end this thing. See you later, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs>